praise God. Isn't he good here today? Hallelujah. Can I tell someone here, you're not here by coincidence. You're here by divine appointment. This was meant to be. Hallelujah. Let's stand tonight or today. And today we're looking for eternal results. Amen. The church of the living God is strong. We are not going to limp through to the finish line. Amen. God is here today. And you know the devil is territorial. But my God owns this world and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. We claim the north and the south, the east and the west. In Jesus' name. If you're here today with a need, God is here to meet you. Praise God. Why don't you worship with us today as we go forward and serve God Almighty. He's here to help you today. Praise God. To the north we cry out. To the south we will shout. The enemy and his kingdom must come down. To the east we profess. To the west we confess. The enemy and his kingdom must come down. We cannot be silent. We cannot sit by. We must take this city for the cause of Jesus Christ. We cannot be silent. We cannot sit by. We must take this city. For the cause of Jesus Christ We are bold, we are strong We are ready to march on Through Christ We will take this city We are bold, we are strong
are going to come and we're just going to praise the Lord again. Lord Jesus, we love you and we are so excited about what you're going to do in this house this morning. Oh, somebody shout unto the Lord.
silence fear Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus sweet presence of the Lord in this house. One more time, just reach out and just close your eyes and begin to open your mouth. Jesus, I need you. Lord, you're wonderful and powerful. Hallelujah. We trust in you, Lord. You're doing great and marvelous things. I trust in you right now, God, and what you're going to do in this place, in this hour, Lord, amongst your people, God. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your eternal results today in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Starting in, and I, I'm almost going to read the full chapter so you don't have to stand. Starting in John chapter 4, verse 3. Jesus, he left Judea and he departed again into Galilee and he must needs go through Samaria. And if you don't know the geography of Israel, Judah was to the south. Samaria was just north of Judah and Galilee was north of Samaria. And I'll get into it in a minute, but no Jew, no self-respecting Jew would ever go through Samaria. But when Jesus came, he said, I am not satisfied with religion. I'm not satisfied with the status quo. I have come to radically Change everything that you ever knew so that you can be born again anew and afresh of the water and the spirit. I don't care how long you've been divided. I don't care how long you've been in false doctrine and not understanding. I will reach past every kind of barrier in life to reach you. As I said last week, Pentecostal culture, we're obsessed with certain things. We're obsessed with what other Pentecostals think of us. And Jesus is just obsessed about the lost. That's all he He's just obsessed about the lost. Just has an overwhelming burden to reach the lost. And just keep those scriptures if you up there if you could, bro. And he was willing to break every socioeconomic rule, every gender rule, every social rule, every tradition, every religious idea. He was willing to break the, not, not compromising the word of God, never compromising the word of God. It's the only thing, the word is the only thing he put above his name. But he came to destroy traditions and he came to destroy religious inventions and Divisions, this division between Samaria and Judah and Israel was the Hatfield and McCoy of, on steroids. You think, well, I haven't talked to Sister Sally for two and a half years because at the potluck last, she voted against my whatever. She didn't eat my chili. She didn't, well, I don't care. But we have, right? Oh, well, three and a half years ago or six months ago or six weeks ago or this is a thousand year division that is going on in this scripture. It began a thousand years previously. I love God so much. Where Jesus says, boys, what are we doing Tuesday afternoon around one? I think I'll blow up the division that was between Samaria and Judah today. I think that's on the agenda after lunch. What do you think? Something that had lasted a thousand years and divided the house of Israel. The Lord Jesus has come today and says, no more is there going to be a division in my church. I don't care how long it's been divided. I don't care what camp you've been in. I have come to bring unity and liberty because look on the field. They're white and ready to harvest. Verse 5. Then he cometh to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. 
it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman, Samaria, to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away under the city to buy meat. His followers were incredibly uncomfortable being in Samaria. This was not something they were accustomed to. And Jesus said, I want you to go right in that city. I want you to buy some food. I'm going to rest here. Notice the disciples don't ask questions, but they're probably murmuring. Why is God doing this to us? Why is God pushing us in a place we don't want to be? Why is God making us coming into a land where we don't want to be? Doesn't, Rabbi, doesn't Master know that we don't talk to these people? My wife and I were out Thursday night for dinner and there was somebody that was serving us and I'll just leave it at this, but they were middle-aged, but they didn't know who they were if you're putting, picking up what I'm putting down. And at first I was like, oh man, I don't want to be served by this person. I'm just being honest. I don't want to be served by this person. God this is a special occasion. Can we go somewhere else? Can, we, can you put us in a different section? And we had them twice. <laughs> and I said, well, Lord, they may not be what I want them to be, but you still love them. Last person on the face of the earth I want to witness to but you died for them just as much as you died for me. And when I'm talking to this person, I can tell. I'm going, okay, God, I'll be nice. And I begin to talk, and I'm making them laugh and so on and so forth. But I can tell that this person was not comfortable in their own skin. They know they're lost. They don't even know what end is up. And the Lord said, I'm going to cut through all of your religious understanding of how to live for me. And I'm going to cut right to, right to the chase. I'm going to the place and to the people that you don't even. You haven't spoken to them for years. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it thou being a Jew askest drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Watch, this is very interesting. She starts the conversation with Jesus Christ with division. Division is her identity. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. Wow. Can you imagine meeting Jesus for the first time in person? And that's the first thing you say to the Savior of the world, to the great God of glory. You're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. There's so much division here. There can never be peace. I want to talk to you about the division. The division started almost, well, yeah, almost a thousand years earlier under King Rehoboam. Solomon desired many wives and God took the kingdom away from his son Rehoboam so Rehoboam became king and, and the kingdom was split and because of David his servant's sake Rehoboam kept Judah but the other 11 tribes left and what happened in the in between over a thousand years is about 300 years later the king of Assyria came and defeated Samaria and took all those people away for 200 years. Then around 538 BC, what was happening was there was pagans living in Samaria. Okay? But what was happening is a very interesting scripture where there was wild beasts that were killing these people that were living there. So the king of Assyria begged the Samaritans to go back to teach them the ways of your God so that they could be safe. 
So then the Samaritans, 200 years later, came back into Samaria and began to worship God, but also entangled themselves with the pagans of the land. So they, they adhered to things of God and, and, and some things that Jehovah taught, and they worshiped in a different mountain than Jerusalem, and they, they did some things that were godly, but, but they also intertwined themselves with the pagans of the day. And then you fast forward another 500 years, the Jews did not consider them anywhere close to being Jews. They were pagans. They believed in false gods. They weren't real Jews at all. And so it was unfathomable for Jesus to be doing what he did. He cut through a thousand years of hurt and bitterness and misunderstanding and people messing up. Before we forgive, we take out the laundry list of everything they've done and say, when they repent, I'll forgive. When they make it all right, I will forgive. But this is so amazing. See, her identity is division. You're not supposed to be talking to me. So she has bravado, but inside she's broken. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, you don't have anything to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence is this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. He gives her a taste of what's coming. I'm going to dangle the truth of who I am a little bit. But now here comes the test. Verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Watch. Jesus saith unto her, You want what I have? It's time to be honest. You want what, I, what I've been telling you? It's time to be honest. Honesty and accountability in the church. And you wonder why you're banging your head against the wall and you don't go any farther and you still struggle and so on and so forth. Jesus says, I'm going to dangle the carrot. I'm going to say, oh yeah, the water I have, you'll never thirst again. I, I want this water. I want this life. I want what you're talking about. Really? Okay, tell me the truth then. Be honest of where you're at. There's so many people in the North American church that aren't honest. It's not honest. Why? There's lots of reasons. And that's why we can't go further. Because when Jesus wants to take you further, he first asks you to be honest and accountable. He asks you to take a look in the mirror and say, I want you to look at the pride in your life or the sin in your life or the problem in your life before I give you something else. And we go, God, you show me what you want to give me and then I will provide the information you ask. No dice. Just like the rich young ruler in Jesus. When the rich young ruler said, Master, I've done all these things since I was a youth. And then Jesus beheld him and loved him and said, okay, good. Now go home and sell everything you have. And he went away soaring because he had great stuff. But Peter, after that, you remember in the scripture, Peter said after that, but Jesus, we have forsaken everything and followed you. And Jesus says, that's why. Whatever you have given up, I'm going to give it to you in spades. If you've lost family, if you've lost lands, I'm going to give it to you in this life and the life to come. But, but here was the condition. I gave everything up and I was accountable and honest. Before God opened that door to something new. And so Jesus says, 
Go and get your husband. Come hither. Now, right here, she could have stopped the flow of the Holy Ghost. Right here, it was all over. And this is what we do when God deals with us. Or when your accountability people deal with you. And you skirt around. Or you deflect or you defer or you go, well, I don't know. And I'll let them believe what they need to believe. But they don't need to know everything. Stop the flow of ministry. And Jesus said unto her, the woman answered and said, I, I don't have a husband. And the Lord said, you passed. You, you were honest. Jesus said unto her, you've well said you have no husband. For you've had five. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that you've said truly. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. You know what? Her identity was division, but inside of it, you know why she put up that identity? It's because there was just a trail of hurt and trauma in her life. I told our music minister today we should team preach, but he said no. Because we were talking about this message and he was giving me stuff. I was like, oh man, that's good. We should team preach. Nope. He said there's no indication in the Bible that woman was a woman of ill repute. She had been married, true, five times. But perhaps her parents didn't have the dowry anymore for the sixth guy. Maybe she was trying to do it right. Remember, they had a form of godliness. What kind of horrid trauma and life did she have? She's now on her sixth, perhaps soon to be husband. See, behind the wall, behind the bravado, behind the division, behind the pointing out what's wrong with everything. Can I tell you, revival in your life starts right with you. When Jesus comes into your atmosphere and says, will you be whole? Will you be healed? Will you be set free? And you say, not in this church. Not with this leadership. Not with Bob in the pew. Not with Sally in the pew. There's no Bobs here, is there? Sorry to any Bobs in the congregation. I was trying to pick a random name. <laughs> when you start the conversation with Jesus with, this is why nothing can happen, then God says, you're right. Nothing can happen in your life. You're correct. I remember trying to minister to a, a good friend and I tried for a long, long time. And he seemed to be doing better and, and not so much. And then I began to dread our phone calls. And then I remember him calling me one day and, and I answered. And hey, bro, how you doing? And da, 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 da. And he was going through another tough time. And I said, bro, God's doing it. And on the phone he said, God is not doing it. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me went, yep, you're right. I'm not cut off. And soon after that, our relationship ended. You got to be careful you don't cut off the Lord when he's trying to get a hold of you. You be careful when God's coming to you and knocking on the heart, knocking on the door of your heart. You don't say, well, because of this, because of that, and because of this church, or because of this tradition, or whatever it is, I can't listen. She comes at him again and says, Our fathers, right, the division, worshiped in this mountain, and ye say that Jerusalem is the place where man ought to worship. Jesus saying to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Watch. He cuts right to the heart of it. He's not, he does not compromise the doctrine. He speaks to the issue that has plagued them a thousand years. And then he moves on. He says, I'm not here to rehash everything you've done wrong. I'm not here to rehash the past. I'm here to tell you this is the truth, but I'm here to say, walk ye in it. 
You worship, you know not what, you know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Boom, a thousand year problem put to rest in one sentence. He didn't have to have a whole Bible. I need to teach your whole city a Bible study about how you guys have been wrong for a thousand years and how it all happened, Rehoboam and all the sin. No, 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 no. He said, why? Because he's not interested in rehashing all the things you've done wrong. You've been wrong. Now let's move on. It's your mistake. But if you're honest, I'll heal you. I'll set you free. There'll be great harvest. There'll be great revival. And there'll be something you've never seen before. And he says, the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For he's seeking such to worship him. God is so hungry for a relationship with you. He's not interested in bringing up all the little things that have happened. Can I tell you that Acts 2.38 is still the only way. When they received the revelation and got the Holy Ghost and began to stumble out into the streets, they began to praise God in different languages. And then Peter got up and preached. The guy who had the keys to the kingdom, he got up and preached the first service that ever was. And he preached the Holy Ghost. And he preached baptism in Jesus' name. Men and brother, what shall we do to be saved? Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost or by evidence of speaking in tongues. You know what Jesus told her? Your doctrine's wrong. But I don't want to sit there and argue about it. I don't want to sit there and debate about it. Why? Because there's a flow happening in this earth and in this time. Come on, church. It's time to unify and go and reach the lost like never before. Verse 24, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the woman saith unto him, she's living in sin. Whether it was because she wanted to or not, she was still doing it. Whether it's because she didn't have money for a dowry or not, she was still living in sin. Watch the gentle, loving correction of Jesus Christ. He points out the sin. And he says, and he points out the doctrinal issue. But then he says, there's a better way. There's a better way. And I've come to cut right to the heart of the matter. There's a better life and a better way. Don't defend your life and don't defend your traditions and don't defend where you've been and what you've been doing because behind that wall and behind that bravado is brokenness. And if you would just... Let the Lord in. If you would just be honest and be accountable and say, it's me. It's me. That friend I ministered to it's not going to make heaven because he refused to take a look in the mirror. It was always somebody else's fault and somebody else's problem and he was always a victim. He was always a victim. And God finally said, I'm, I'm done. Today he's in false doctrine. when you're honest and when you're open the woman saith unto him watch oh, that Jesus would blow apart a thousand years of division on a Tuesday afternoon at one o'clock 
and use the most unlikely source to have a revival. Oh, oh, a woman who shacked up. God says, that's the one. <laughs> are you sure? The disciples, what are you doing, bud? Like, think about this just for a second. Imagine, in one afternoon, not only is he taking them through Samaria, sending them into the city to get meat, he's ministering to a woman who's in sin and uses her to start a revival. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Come into pastor's office. We got to have a chat. This is not going to work. This is not how you start a city-wide revival by going to the least person in the community that you're not even supposed to talk to. What are you doing, Lord? But she's so excited that Jesus would talk to her. She's so humbled and honored that that man of God would speak into her life. She runs back to the city. Come and see. The Messiah has come. He called Christ and when he's coming, he's going to tell us all things. Keep going. And Jesus saying that her, I speak unto thee, am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he taught with the woman, yet no man said, what are you doing? Verse 28, the woman then left her water pot and she went into that city and said to the man that had no respect for her. Come on, she was the off school rings of life. You can't tell me after five husbands, now you're shacked up with a sixth one, that you're going to have a whole lot of credibility. Right? Hey, listen to... Yeah, we want to hear what you have to say because you've been a model citizen. Come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city. There was a multitude that came out upon her report. Verse 31. And in the meanwhile, he was disciples prayed him saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And, with the, and this, is, this is how I got on all of this, is what you gave me Wednesday morning. And Jesus, right in the midst of the sea of Samaritans, where they weren't Jews anymore, they didn't believe the right thing, they compromised everything, they had so much sin in their life. You couldn't, you ever look at somebody and go, man, I don't even know where to start with your life or your family or your whatever or your situation. You, there is so much water under the bridge with you, my soul. And in a moment, Jesus cuts right to the heart of it. And he washes away a thousand years of reproach. And he says, I've come to do a new thing. I've come to do a new thing in this house. I've come to do a new thing in your life. I've come to change you forever. I don't care how much water has been under the bridge. I don't care how bad you've been. I don't care how bad your family's been or how bad your whatever. A thousand years of reproach. And in a moment, Jesus wipes it all away. And then he speaks to the church. And he deals with the church. He says, you only want to reach the people you want to reach. You're all fired up because you think you can reach people in Jerusalem or priests or you can be known, or you can be famous, or you can be known in Pentecost, or you can da 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 And Jesus said, I just don't care about that at all. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Look at the Samaritans. Look at the people you hate. 
Look at the people you would never talk to. Look at the people you would walk around their entire territory. There's the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And what Terry Marcus said to me early this morning, I said, wow, that could be it too. We say, there's the harvest. But he was also talking about, it's time to unify. Stop letting division be your identity in the church. Stop letting your division and your hangups and your trust issues and your, I'll never get close to so-and-so. I'll never trust such and such again because I know what they did six months ago. And God says, come on, man. The fields are ready. They're ready. Why do we still have division identities? And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto eternal life that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap the where you bestowed no labor, other men labored and ye entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. no good for nothing which testified he told me all such a presence of the Lord in this house I have just a few more things to say to you if you could stand Let's just begin to reach out to the Lord right now. There is an arresting presence of a holy God in this house. Come on, church. Your division is not your identity. It won't happen here because it won't happen in this family because it won't happen in my life because hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But you need to stop being a victim of your circumstances. You need to stop being a victim of everything that's happened to you because the healer is here. The savior is here and he's not willing that any should perish. Now here's what I need to tell you and I'm going to pray in just a minute. It doesn't matter how long your grudge has been. The Lord has come to speak to the heart of the matter and get you back on the right track. Remember the man at the pool of Bethesda? He wanted to bring up the last 38 years of junk. Jesus said, hey, you want to be whole? Mind-boggling. The Lord himself. Do you want to be whole? Surely this man had heard about the Lord. Surely. But God, there's nobody here to put me in the water. What would what do you think the Lord was doing? Oh, really? <sighs> what a bunch. That wasn't my question to you. What wasn't my question rehash everything that's happened to you and this is why you can't do it and this is why you can't have revival. This is why you can't live for God and this is what now. I don't want to hear any of that. Will you be made whole? That's what he's asking. That's what he desires to know. Will you be made whole in his presence? Second thing I have to tell you, the one person or group of people you never thought God would want, that's exactly who he's telling you to reach. And the third thing is, if you're the person that has felt like the woman at the well, symbolic of the state of the people of Samaria, not where you need to be, 
holding on to your own understanding of what you think or what your religious tradition says or your life tradition, whatever, but you have that veneer to protect yourself when all you really need is a Savior. All you really need is Jesus to cut through all your bravado, cut through all your talking points, cut through all your defense mechanisms and say, you've been wrong, but I love you. And I'm here to set you free. And I'm here to use you in a great way. You know what the amazing thing is about this story? Is that they go and they stayed a couple days and many people received the word. And then in the book of Acts, I believe it's in Acts chapter 8, right? There's great persecution from Saul of Tarsus and others. And Philip, they, they are, they're annexed. They run. And Philip goes to Samaria. I doubt if he was not persecuted, he would have gone to Samaria. But I remember preaching a message, the place we never wanted to go but had revival. COVID. Philip didn't want to go, but because of persecution, he was pushed out and he went to Samaria. And I'm telling you, they had breakout, harvest, and revival. We need to stop judging what God wants to do out there and just say, God, you're in charge. So here's how we're going to end this. Hallelujah. If God is dealing with you, if God has been speaking to your heart about what I've been preaching this morning, I want you to come right up here very quickly. Very quickly. If God, if you're just sitting there, you know, like, nope, not me, that's fine. But if God's speaking to you, he's talking to me, Lord. Come right up here, right up to the front. Thank you. Just a few more moments, right up to the front. This is not going to be a regular service. Not going to be a regular service. Not going to be a regular service. Now, everybody else, I want you to gather around these people. Very quickly, gather around these people. We're going to be accountable today. We're going to be honest today. We're not going to be the victim of our circumstance. We're not going to hide behind our defense mechanisms and self-justifications and we're going to be honest and God's going to heal God's going to set free raise your hands right up to heaven folks lay your hands on them begin to pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ God you're doing some spiritual heart surgery this morning you're doing spiritual heart surgery you're going very delicately, Lord, into the emotions of the people in this house. God, and you're, you're helping them with what they're struggling with and what they've withheld from you. God, you're beginning to deal with their hearts. You're beginning to deal with where they're at. But that thousand-year division and thousand-year problem doesn't have anything when Jesus Christ walks into the atmosphere. He doesn't have anything when the Lord walks into the circumstance. There's freshness. There's newness. Oh, that's it. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you're putting the pieces back together in their lives right now. You're putting broken pieces back together. You're putting emotional pieces back together. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
There is a better way. There is a Savior that sticks closer than a brother. We don't need to defend our lifestyles. We don't need to defend where we've been. We just need to say, Lord, you're right, and I'm ready for something new. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I feel like the Lord is repairing deep things right now. Repairing hearts. Allow yourself to be broken in the presence of the Lord because he will put you back together way better than what you had before. Jesus. Hayarama shakarata kasa. 